Hello everyone, today I'm going to be your Sim CFI, and in this lesson we're going to be covering the traffic pattern and landings. Right now we're approaching the Yuba County Airport, which is straight off our nose, and to determine which runway we're going to land on, we're going to listen to the AWOS. So the winds are calm, so we can land any runway we want. So right now we're set up for a 45 degree entry for the left downwind for 3-2 at Marysville. And so this is how you always want to enter the traffic pattern at a 45 degree angle to the downwind like this. And then you're going to turn onto your downwind leg, then left base, and then final. We're going to land, we'll take off, and then we'll climb out, do a left crosswind, left downwind, base, final, and land, so that you can see the whole traffic pattern from takeoff as well. But I wanted to make sure that I demonstrated this traffic pattern entry procedure. And another thing we do is we set the heading bug to the run where we're going to land on, just like when we took off, run one for runway incursion avoidance again, and two, you'll see how it's going to help us in the pattern identifying when to turn and roll out from the different traffic pattern lakes. So we'll pause this again. We're at 1,500 feet, so we need to descend to the pattern altitude, which is 1,100 feet here at Yuba County. So we'll go ahead and reduce the power a bit for that. And now for the different speeds in the pattern, we're going to use 90 knots on downwind, and then 80 knots for the descent. 75 knots on base, and then 65 knots on final. And we have different power settings, flap settings to get that. Also keep in mind that there's there's a few different ways to start descending and landing once you're in the pattern. And so we're just going to go over one common way right now. So right now we're at our pattern altitude, 1,100 feet. To maintain 90 knots, we need to set 1,900 RPM which is the bottom of the green arc on this tachometer. And now we're going to turn onto our left downwind leg, maintaining our pattern altitude, using a little bit of trim. Now it wants to go down, and need to trim, trim up a bit. So now we're flying parallel to the runway. This is the downwind leg. And you want to maintain about a half mile away from the runway. And that's evident by maintaining the runway halfway up the wing strut on this high wing airplane. So we're doing about 90 knots, bottom of the green arc. And so the next checkpoint here is going to be when we're abeam the numbers. Abeam meaning uh, in line with them like this. So right about here. We're going to reduce the power to 1400 RPM and we're going to add 10 degrees of flaps, which is the first notch. Then we're going to keep our altitude, wait for the air speed to have reduced to 80 knots, and then we will descend at 80 knots using our pitch control to control air speed. And what that means again is if your air speed is too fast, you pull back a little bit, and if you're going too slow, you push forward a little bit. So 1400 RPM. 10 degrees flaps, and when you add flaps, especially in a Cessna, you have to push forward a little bit to avoid it from ballooning. Now we're at 80 knots, we're pushing those over a little bit more, and this will give us about 500 feet per minute. And now, the plane wants to go up, so I'm going to add a little bit of nose, nose down trim to help maintain this. So the next checkpoint for the traffic pattern is going to be when we're 45 degrees off the end of the runway, which is right about now. And this is where we're going to turn left base, and we're going to add a second notch of flaps for 20 degrees, and this will give us about 75 knots. So now we're turning left base, add that second notch of flaps, again a little bit of nudging forward on the stick initially to avoid ballooning. And now we're going to be pitching for 75 knots. Now look at that heading indicator. You see how the, the heading bug is right on the left side. That means we've made our 90 degree turn. 
We'll roll out from that. And it's time to turn final. We'll add our last notch of flaps for full flaps. And now we're going to be going for 65 knots. Overshot final a little bit. You don't want to overreact by overbanking. Just, just make it uh, the same gentle turns that you've been making in the pattern and get yourself reestablished on center line. It's a lot harder to do it in the simulator than it is in real life. So just keep note of that. So now we have 65 knots. And I'll show you if, if, if we're going too slow. If we're going too slow like we are now, you just push forward on the control. And then, so what this concept is, is pitching for power and, I mean, pitching for airspeed and using power to control your altitude. So we're slightly high right now and we're slightly slow. So we're going to have the nose down just a little bit for the speed and we're going to have to reduce our power to descend. So I reduce the power to idle and I let the nose drop a little bit to get us to 65. And so see now we're just about on speed. And now when we're coming to the runway, the two things you're looking at at this point is just airspeed and an aim point. And so I'm using the numbers as an aim point. You want to keep your aim point relatively in the center, slightly lower center of your windshield. And you keep that all the way until the round out. The round out is when we stop descending and we just go level right above the runway. And then you focus your eyes all the way to the end of the runway. And once you begin that rollout, the only thing you look at is the end of the runway. And then you just hold the airplane off using more and more back pressure on the stoke and the stick or the yoke. So I keep, see, I keep that reference point in the center of the windshield. Now we roll out. Now the only thing I'm looking at is the end of the runway. And we just keep holding it back and holding it back. More, 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 more. And we go touchdown on the mains. And then we come down on the nose wheel. Now again, when you want to brake, you want to pull the yoke or stick back first to relieve pressure off the nose wheel. So now to show you the whole traffic pattern from this point, we'll raise our flaps, we'll reset our trim, make sure the mixture is rich, and we'll apply full power. So now that we have the power added, a little bit of right rudder to maintain center line. So I was playing with the rudder like this. 55 knots, we'll ease back on the control. Right rudder for the climb. And then just let the nose come down a little bit to get your 80 knots. And now we pitch for 80. Bring the nose up to the horizon line. And so now the, the aeronautical information manual states that you'll start your crosswind turn when you're th within 300 feet of your pattern altitude. So pattern altitude 1,100 feet, we're going to start our turn at 800 feet, maintaining 80 knots all the way through the climb, which is our best way to climb for a 172R. Using a little bit of forward trim to maintain 80. Okay, so 800 feet, we'll, we'll turn, and when we make a climbing left turn, especially a left turn, you, you don't really have to push left rudder, you really just have to come do less right rudder. Okay, so now we're coming up a pattern altitude, so we have to level off, reduce the power to the bottom of the green arc, 1900, to maintain our 90 knots, and then you see the heading bug, we're going to level roll level, and now we're going to turn downwind immediately because you don't want to get too far away from the runway. And then make sure you don't descend like that, get back to your altitude. Use a little bit of nose up trim. You can see how I'm wiggling the yoke as I'm playing with the trim to find the right trim setting. And now we're just a little too far away, so I'm going to let, let the airplane come back towards the runway a bit playing with the trim to make it work. You always want to use your trim to make your, your pitch control easier. That's the whole job of the trim. Okay, so as we're getting reestablished on our downwind here, we're, we'll do our before landing checklist. Landing light on, mixture rich, fuel on both, and we have our seat belts on. 
Now we're established on downwind, the heading bug is at the bottom. We can see we're flying parallel, the runway is halfway up the wing strut. We're about a half mile away from the runway. We'll reduce the power a bit, we're a little bit faster than 90 knots. Okay, we're approaching the AB point. We're going to reduce a power setting to 1400 RPM. Add 10 degrees of flaps, a little bit of nose forward pressure on the yoke so we don't balloon. We have 80 knots. Let the nose come down. Descend to 80. This gives us about 500 feet per minute. And the next checkpoint in the pattern is going to be looking for that 45 degrees off the end of the runway. Okay, we need to go down a little bit more. See, we're slow on speed. Make sure we have our 1400 RPM. Look back again. We're about 45 degrees off now. We'll turn left base. Add 20 degrees of flaps now. And this has given us about 75 knots. And I usually use no more than 30 degrees of bank in the pattern. If you get too big of a bank angle and you accidentally get too slow on speed, you could stall at a slightly higher airspeed than normal, and stalling and spinning at low altitudes is just not favorable. So now we're turning final. I'm adding the last notch of flaps, and we're shooting for 65 knots. We're going to pitch for airspeed and power for altitude. So let the nose come up a little bit for the 65 knots. And so far everything's going all right. We're just ever so slightly high, so I'm going to reduce the power just a little bit, about 100 RPM or so. And we can see with the heading bug, the heading bug's at the top, that means we're landing on the proper runway. So I got the reference point right where I wanted it in the windscreen. And I'm just focusing on that and airspeed right now. Now I reduce the power to idle. We have the runway made. We're over it. And we begin our rollout. And that's where I'm shifting my eyes to the very end of the runway and using peripheral vision to judge the height off the runway and holding it back more and more. There we go. Touchdown in the mains. A nice touchdown on the nose. With the A2A products, if you have any bit of rudder input and you come down on the nose wheel, it makes that little shake like that. And it's a, it's not quite accurate with the 172 um, because the, the nose wheel isn't always engaged. It's, it's not directly connected to the rudder pedal, but on a, on a Piper product, the, the nose wheel is directly connected to the rudders, to the rudder pedals. And so in a Piper, especially in a crosswind, you have to make sure that you're you, you neutralize the rudder paddles before you touch down the nose wheel. So that concludes the traffic pattern and, and two landings. Um, feel free to leave any feedback in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next video.